July, under the big top at the Calgary Stampede. And all hell is about to break loose. It may look like hell, but these guys wouldn't want to be anywhere else. They're farriers, among the best in the world at turning a few ounces of steel into quality footwear for a horse. It would be nice if you had it. <laughs> You've got this one. This is what you're going to start with. If it doesn't Art work. Galley is one of the show's stewards. He's also a veteran farrier with a thriving practice in Alberta, so he knows what the contestants are going through. It's hard work. Especially on draft horses, like they can, they're heavy. Even if they stand good, rest on you, they're heavy, their feet are heavy. You know, and, and here you add the, the um, nervous energy, the heat from the forges, it's hot. Hot and smelly. There's nothing quite like the aroma of sizzling horse books. But no one's complaining. Some have come from distant lands for the privilege of rubbing broad shoulders with other members of the farrier fraternity. Steve Dixon is a farrier from BC. It's a competition, but like what I mean by camaraderie, these guys will give you the shirt off their back while you're in the competition, just so that you'll do better. Not that you'd want that shirt, not after the workout a farrier puts in, but sweat is a badge of honor in the International Farrier Brotherhood. It's a very small fraternity. It's a very tight-knit fraternity. I don't say it's tight-knit and that it's hard to get into. I don't think it's that tough to get into. But you sort of have to prove yourself to get into it. Art Galley and Steve Dixon will get the opportunity to prove themselves big time in a little over a month. Both have been selected to the four-man Canadian team for the World Team Championships in Britain, the farrier version of the Olympics. Scared. <laughs> Apprehensive. This is putting my professional, um, my living, what I do for a living up against those guys, and, and what if I don't stack up, you know? How do you feel? The Calgary competition is one of a series on the road to the big prize. The coveted title of best farrier team in the world will be awarded about five weeks from now. It will be a true trial by fire. Saturday morning in late August, the Canadian Farrier team, four competitors, one alternate, and a manager, board the bus for the exhibition grounds at Stoneleigh, Warwickshire. Files scrub on the floor, yeah. Time for some last minute strategy and advice. Steve Dixon is the five time veteran at the championships. His toe looks a lot thicker than the way the picture is. Art Galley, he's the rookie, and he's finding it just a little overwhelming. Just the standing around waiting is probably harder on you than, than getting in there. The butterflies are starting to melt pretty fast now, so. A Canadian team has never won the Farrier Championships, although a couple of years ago, Canadians did come in second, and that turned a few heads. You see, it's almost an unwritten rule that a team from Britain will come out on top. That's partly because there's so much farrier skill in such a small area on these islands. And it's also because, compared to Canada at least, they've got about a 500-year head start. Kenilworth Castle was built way back in the 14th century, and even then, the sound of farrier's work echoed off these stones. Farriers have been an organized guild here since 1345. 
So history is on the British side, and Canadian team manager Chris Zizian knows it. Basically, they've forgotten more than we'll ever know at this point. We're going to wait till I trim it to measure it. Steve Dixon of BC and Bruce Haig of Ontario are teamed up first. Including the practice on Friday, they've worked together three times. Right next to them are the Welsh, the favourites, operating like a well-oiled machine. The Welsh team probably practices every other weekend. You know, it, it, Wales isn't, isn't a big area, and they can get together quite a bit. Get it all around heat, Bruce. Get it all hot. Well, it's actually kind of scary to work beside them there. Normally, it, just by having somebody beside you, you tend to pace yourself with them. And uh, I just can't keep up to that pace. Not so hard, it's mushrooming. They're working really well together now. They're, they're smooth, there's not much conversation. Get it hot! 60 minutes, every one has to count. The best quality shoes win. Good, let's do it. Forget the brushing. I want to get finished, but I cut the right amount of steel. Um, I got finished. This is a team event. So if one man doesn't finish, it hurts the whole team. Farriers don't make excuses. But beyond history and teamwork, the British teams are also far better trained. When I first came over to England, I had been through a three-month course, a nine-week course. They used to call us nine-week wonders. And uh, your average apprenticeship over here is four years and three years of university. It's Art Galley's turn at the anvil, with Leo Chapman of Ontario as fireman. And things start out badly. You know what I did? I made my inside first. Well, you're always trying to think ahead to the next step, you know? They're a little behind, but I think they'll catch up. Once again, the smooth, striking Welsh occupy the next forge. A couple times I've felt myself tightening up, and then I take a deep breath, and you can just feel things kind of ease off. I guess you have to learn to, to relax. Yeah, right, relax. Doing pretty good. He's got 29 minutes to go. He's got the well done. Pretty. Maybe not, but it's over. Yeah. This is a young man's game. <laughs> Us old codgers, that's a little bit too much of an energy expenditure in a short time. <laughs> it's in the judges' hands now, and it's all good work, but everyone knows theirs could have been better. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. Shit. First prize is 200 British pounds, and more important, the Worshipful Company of Blacksmiths trophy. Proof you belong in this fraternity, if anyone here really needed that proof. These guys are family to me. I could miss three, four years in a row, come back, and they'd all remember my name. You know, be a handshake, and have you got a place to stay? Thanks, Alec. Being a Canadian, and I guess when you get over there, and you realize all of a sudden that, oh, I'm representing my country. That was a good feeling. It was. It was a real good feeling. In the end, the Canadians placed ninth out of 12 teams, just five points out of fifth, but still well back of the first place Welsh team. Come on over there. <laughs> you got enough. No one's feeling crushed by that, just more determined about next time.
For the magazine, I'm Jim McQuarrie in Warwickshire, England.